It is so easy to skip over the clear statements of scripture, particularly if you have in place a doctrinal view that doesn't quite agree with the statements. Many, including this author, have trodden the doctrinal trails established by others without questioning the direction of these trails and whether they were correct. Given the call to the walk worthy in our last session, today's verse is such a doctrinal instruction. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 13, KJV, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because, when ye received the word of God which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. So, what is verse 13 telling us in this regard? Let's break this down. For this cause is a direct reference back to what is verse 12, that ye would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. And it is why Paul says that he and those with him thank God without ceasing. We should be challenged by the content of Paul's prayer for others. Further cause for this prayer for the Thessalonian believers is because they received the word of God which they heard from Paul and company. Paul's instruction ending with walking worthy was received and considered a reason for his thanksgiving. Continuing, they also received the word of God, not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God. This equates what Paul shared with them as the very words of God to them. Since Paul frequently had challenges to the message that Christ revealed to him to preach, there was thanksgiving on his part when the Thessalonian believers recognized the words of God through him in this matter. Lastly, we learn of the impact of the word of God that the Thessalonian believers received of Paul, namely, it was that which effectually worketh also in you that believe. So, the word received of Paul was not void of power. Quite the contrary, regarding how it worked in you that believe, was effectually, an old adverb meaning in a manner to produce the intended effect. Thoroughly, source, Webster's 1828 American Dictionary. So, quite the contrary to what those of the circumcision were claiming of Paul's message, example, that it left out the works of the law and circumcision and was therefore missing some things, God's word through Paul thoroughly produced the intended effect. Believer, receive the word of God for the intended effect. Continuing from the previous study, where Paul noted the Thessalonian believers had received the word of God spoken by Paul, not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God. We noted that this equated what Paul shared with them as the very words of God to them. Since Paul had frequently had challenges to the message that Christ revealed to him to preach, there was thanksgiving on his part when the Thessalonian believers recognized the words of God through him in this matter. Continuing from this, Paul notes. 1 Thessalonians 2 verses 14-16, KJV, For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God which in Judea are in Christ Jesus, for ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus, and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins alway, for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. Let's look at what this says. Sometimes, the ones that believers expect to support you are the very ones that let you down. In fact, such as these may be the critical, doubtful, and might even persecute believers for their belief slash teaching, regardless and perhaps not even willing to search the scripture as to whether these beliefs are true. This is what was happening with the Thessalonian believers, and it was coming from their own countrymen. When the Thessalonians believed Paul's gospel, the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, Romans 16 verse 25, they began to suffer persecution of their own countrymen. And this persecution was in similar fashion to how the Judean kingdom church, as well as the Gentile churches that Paul apparently had formed, suffered persecution by the leadership of Israel. And thus, the Thessalonian believers effectively became followers by suffering similarly. Paul, describing how the Jewish leadership, of which he once was, states that they both killed the Lord Jesus, and their own prophets, and have persecuted us. And one of the main things that perturbed the Jewish leadership and was a root cause of their persecution of Paul and company was the approach toward the Gentiles which was outside the prophesied path. Thus, Paul says that these Jews were contrary to all men and were forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved. In what appears to be a side note in this regard, 
Paul states that this persecution was such that it was literally in a manner, so as always they fill up, to the brim the measure of, their sins. Likewise, Paul notes that it was such sinful behavior that would result in the future wrath coming upon them to the uttermost, a note likely regarding the judgment, Daniel's 70th week, that was coming on Israel, still future. Remember, Israel had been concluded in unbelief along with the Gentiles by this time and was thus out of favor with God and had a status equivalent to the Gentiles. Back to Paul's beginning statements, as believers we should not be surprised when criticism, cast aspersions, and even persecution come from the very ones that should be supportive of us, if we preach Christ according to the revelation of the mystery and the liberty that we have therein, many within what is supposedly our own faith will be so troubled by our not being under their yoke of bondage, legalistic and wrongly divided teachings, that they will oppose us, comma, believer, stand fast in. The liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, Galatians 5 verse 1. Thank you for watching this Bible study today.